Welcome everyone to our devotion this Saturday. If you're out in the uh, pre-function area, please begin to make your way on in. Let's stand. We're going to begin in worship, but before we raise our hands and our voices together, allow me to take just a moment. I, I really gave all the introduction that I, I could last night. And um, I'm so thankful for Brother Albritton and his willingness to minister, especially considering what he's had to carry of late. And um, I know that the Lord and your prayers are holding him up and his family up. Amen. And so we just want to open our hearts in worship unto the Lord. And God has as much of the word as you have within you. God wants to pour in more today. Because that's the way God works. Bitter, bigger, better, greater than ever. Hallelujah. Can we raise our hands? We raise our voices. Praising the Lord. Thanking him. Opening up ourselves to whatever God has to speak into your spirits. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, speak to your church today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you for the man of God that you've granted your word, Lord, for this moment. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that every heart be tuned to what you wish to accomplish, God. For you promised that your word would not go out void, Lord, but that it would accomplish that which you please. God, have your pleasure with us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. so worthy of all the glory all the honor all the praise all the adoration there's a miracle in this room with my name on it and there's a healing in this room and it's here for me and there's a breakthrough in this room and it's got my name on it so I'm gonna put a praise on it somebody put a praise on it so I'm gonna put a praise on it Somebody put a praise on it Cause there's a miracle In this room With my name on it And there's a healing In this room And it's here for me And there's a breakthrough in this room with my name on it. So I'm going to put a praise on it. Somebody put a praise on it. So I'm going to put a praise no matter the situation, I'm gonna put a praise on it. I may be facing mountains, I may be going through trials, but I'm gonna put a praise. When I open up my mouth and speak, that's where the Spirit of the Lord is. Cause where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Lord, we're desperate for your presence. Let's lift up our hands, Lord. We're here for you. We're desperate. We're longing for a move. Wonders 
we need we need a move we're desperate lord we need a move i am here for you oh Sing, we need, we need a Cause chains break when you move. We need a move. Shackles all loose when you move. We need a move. Cause we need and we need. We need a move. Here I am, I'm available, Lord. We need a move. Let's lift our hands, Lord. Let's lift our hands all across this room. Worship God. And give him permission to do everything that he wants to do today. Would you do that? Amen. Let it be twofold. Let it be a sign of surrender and worship in the Lord. Amen. Give him permission to move in your heart, in your life, in this room. To do everything that he would like to do in this service today. Lord, we honor you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We invite you. We give you open invitation to our minds, to our hearts, to our life and our life steps and journey in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and you may be seated. I'm going to take just a few moments for some opening comments. Today, I give honor to all of you, the Bible quizzing community from across this nation in Canada. What an incredible community of believers this is and I'm honored to be a part of it and thankful to be associated with you and thankful for your love and your prayers for our family during these last few months to our Louisiana and POA Bible quiz family I see many of them right up front our leaders from Alexandria Bill and Nisha Elliott we give you honor to brother sister masters brother Gary I love you Thanks for inviting me. Not fully qualified to be intermediate quiz master. God knew and it helped carry me this year. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fobear, for your belief and trust. Thank you for trusting us to minister today. To my nephew and niece, Trace and Abigail Constant, thanks for helping us out the last couple months. Couldn't have made it without you. You both kicked in some amazing quoting. Appreciate it. And especially to my niece, Kellen. Kellen, your love and commitment for this ministry and for my girls and coaching and helping them, whether you're coaching them or not, it is amazing. You've always gone the extra mile. You lead with and expect excellence. And my favorite, you consistently convey just how much you believe in them. Thank you. This year, in these last few months, you've gone the mile after the extra mile. And I'll never forget it. I want to take a moment, give honor to our Jamie, my Jamie. It's because of her that we became involved in this ministry. We had, I had family and quizzing but I wasn't ready to bite off that much work. But when Jamie heard that there were statistics saying that young people who Bible quiz have a much greater retention rate of staying in church, then when the opportunity unfolded, she immediately jumped on it so that we could be in quizzing. I give honor to her today. I remember scorekeeping one year in junior nationals and knowing that she was in the room and I could not find her, couldn't find her. 
I don't know if any other moms have ever done this, but she was literally on the floor interceding between the last two rows praying. I think the other team's mom from Tennessee was back there doing the same and they became good friends. To my creed man, he's some kind of awesome sitting here on the third row. We didn't make it far into this year's material, two verses. And I have a bone to pick with whoever sets up those verses for a then five-year-old. Exodus 24, 12 is a lot to bite off for your first verse. But he did it. And on the Sunday after his mom passed, my daughter leaned over during the altar service. They had been talking about baptism and he decided to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And my pastor called him to the platform and handed him the mic and at six years old in front of 1,500 people, he nailed Exodus 24, 12. I love you, buddy. I'm probably the only preacher that's ever preached an event like this that as we were leaving the room, I had to be serenaded with veggie tails needing to tell me something that you don't have a belly button. To my beautiful girls, Emery and Eden, on the front row, God's hand is on your lives, both of you in unique and beautiful ways. The grace and strength and dignity that you've shown has touched your dad so much. That you're here is amazing. That you're here and prepared to quiz your best is absolutely amazing. And I give you honor today. No matter what happens in the next few days, you're my champions. To my sister, Joy Constant, here today, you are a rock to me. I love you. Thanks for being here. And we have a very special guest with us today. Vicki Caldwell, my wife's mom, my mother-in-law, is here with us, sitting on about the 10th row. She wouldn't be anywhere else. She loves coming to Nationals to sponsor, support her girls. We buried her mom last Friday. She's lost her daughter and her mom in the last seven weeks. And I'm going to take the privilege of standing here to ask a special request of you for her. 131 teams, over 300 quizzers, 40 districts represented. I think we can put some incredible prayer on Vicki Caldwell to bring strength and anointing to her life. How many of you will pray for Vicki? Amen. Would you stand with me right now? Amen. And let's pray for her. If you don't mind, pray for my family as we navigate going forward, me in ministry, my kids with school. God's got it. He's going to lead us. Could you just lift your hands and pray right now? Lord, in Jesus' name, God, we honor you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Your presence is in this house. God, I pray strength. I pray strength throughout this Bible quiz family today, Lord, from the front to the back, from the left to the right. I pray strength and healing to Vicki today, to Cece. I, I pray it to my family going forward. I thank you. Amen. I thank you for the Bible quiz community, part of our family that's carrying us, Lord. I thank you for it, Jesus. I thank you for it, Jesus. When Brother Faubert asked me if I would minister at this session, it was towards the ends of last year. God very quickly gave me a word. I didn't realize until months later, in card number 334, that the verse that God gave me to preach was part of our study for this year. It's ministered to me, I pray it ministers to you. Deuteronomy chapter 17, I wanna look at verse 14 and then verse 18 and 19 and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14, when thou art come, Unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me. When you set a king, 
Here's what's to happen. Verse 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Let me stay there for just a moment on verse 18. It said when he becomes king, he is to write him a copy of the law from the book that is before the priest. Let me read that in New King James. He shall write for himself. Everybody say for himself. He shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book from the one before the priest. Before we move, here's the Bible that's before the priest. The anointed word of God from the anointed man of God. But the Lord didn't tell the king, try to get that Bible and keep it. The Lord said, when you become king, you take that Bible and you take a blank book and you write it down for yourself. You make you a personal copy. That's what you are to do. Why? Verse 19. And this is from our study, correct? And it, somebody say, and it. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. Let's do a brief moment of pronoun identification. Aren't you excited about that? What is the it in verse 19? Is it the preacher's Bible? It's the copy that he was to write for himself. Why is he to keep it with him at all times? Why? The Bible said that he may learn. He is to read it. He is to keep it with him at all times. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God. Keep all the words of this law and these statutes. And to do them. He's to write it down. He's to keep it for himself. Because if he does that, then he will follow and obey God's word. I want to minister on the subject, get it for yourself. God bless and you may be seated. I remember it was junior camp in Tioga, Louisiana. Favorite time of year for many of us was youth camp. I'm 54 and I still love going to youth camp. It was a great, great time back in those days not many play softball out in the heat they've kind of gotten wimpy in these years now recreations at one in the morning and they pump in air conditioners we played at two o'clock in the afternoon in the heat and we played softball it wasn't even under a roof and I remember for some reason that year my cousin and I we were junior campers my cousin and I were sharing my glove playing on two different teams, but we tried to coordinate. Okay, I play at this time, you play at this time, and you went straight from the the big day rally to lunch at the cafeteria, and then from there, I was first game. I couldn't find him anywhere. I couldn't find him in the cafeteria. I ran back to our church dorm to change clothes. He wasn't in the church dorm. He had my glove on his belt. He had left that day saying, I got our glove, and it was hooked to his belt. He was ready, but I was first game, and I couldn't find him anywhere. I remember feelings of frustration. Let me just go ahead and say it. For about 11-year-old, I was mad. I was mad. I'm like, where is Kevin? He's always at the cafeteria. That dude eats. He's always ready to play ball. Where is, and I was mad, and I was looking. I looked at the concession stand. I looked in different places, and about that time, he came walking out of the tabernacle. His face swollen and red, his voice a little raspy, and he said, I just got the Holy Ghost. And he'd been in the tabernacle for about an hour praying. I'll be honest, that was the last place I thought to look. (laughs) Jesus kind of had a story like that. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 41, and I'm going to pull from this story just briefly, and Brother Carson What a beautiful message last year about clearing customs. Powerful 
I thank you for that. I pull from this story again. The Bible said in verse 41 of Luke 2, his parents, everybody say his earthly parents. Jesus' earthly parents on this earth was Joseph and Mary. They went to Jerusalem for the Passover and Jesus was 12 years old when they went to the feast. And I I understand that 12 is the, the young age of, of our quizzers here today, but I would like for this to represent this season of growth and development and maturity in Jesus' life at 12 in all of our lives. You're growing up. You're not kids anymore, and, and, and God is speaking and working and ministering in your life. And the Bible said, even in verse 40, the child grew. He waxed wrong, strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So the boy, Jesus, is growing up. I won't stay here long, but it sure is fun to imagine. The Bible teaches us that Jesus was all man and all God, not 50% man and 50% God. He was all man, all God. The Bible tells us nothing about Jesus from age 1 to 12. But I propose to you if he was all man, then from 1 to 12, he was all boy. I just like to imagine what it would have been like to be all boy and have access to any superpower you wanted. That's not my message. I just enjoy thinking about it. I mean, I come in sometimes and Creed is on the back of the couch and he's got one, one leg and both arms on the wall. And he said, look, Dad, I'm crawling up the wall backwards like a spider. Jesus could. He didn't have to be standing on the top of the couch. He, he didn't have to get in the bathtub. He could walk on water. He, he, he won every hide-and-seek championship. Teleportation is a, fun, it's a fun thing to have. Joseph won every fishing tournament. I mean, Jesus just said, over there, Dad, over there. I mean, they caught everything. I could go on. I, I, I enjoy this imagination process. I really do. None of their pets could ever stay dead. He always found where they were. Anyway. But the Bible says he grew, he became strong, he began to grow up. Growing from a kid to a young man, maturity was taking place. The story goes on that Mary and Joseph, time in Jerusalem ended and their whole group left. They realized that Jesus was missing and they looked for him for several days. And you laughed when I said I didn't expect to find my cousin in the tabernacle up at the altar praying. But I don't think they expected to find Jesus in the temple either or it would not have taken them three days to figure out where he was. They must have looked at Chick-fil-A. They must have looked in the mall lobby or the hotel lobby. They weren't looking at the temple. So he was all boy. But something began to find him. And when they found him, they were amazed. And Mary said, why have you dealt with us like this? Your father, somebody hear this. Your father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Now, as a parent, I'll say this is one of those moments. I had it with my cousin Kevin. I was mad for about five seconds. And then I said, wait a minute. He was in the house of God getting the Holy Ghost. How mad can I be about a glove? And as a parent, you're like still got to get on their case for getting lost and not being with the group. And, and, but inside you're going, they're in the house of God. He, he's in the temple. Something powerful is going on here. But Mary said, your father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And Jesus answered, why are you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? I don't believe Jesus had an attitude, but he was reminding Mary, Joseph is my earthly father. But do you remember angels visited you when I was born? I'm from above. I have a heavenly father. I have a calling from him and a purpose from him in my life. Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? One version says, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? One footnote says, didn't you know I had to be in the affairs of my father? At 12 years old, something began shifting. At 12, something began changing. He's like, who I am is starting to show up. Amen. My life, my calling is starting to happen. And to those born again, filled with God's spirit, 
Thank God for your earthly parents, your parent, your grandparent, your guardian that raised you. Thank you that they brought you to God's house. But I speak to you today. You have another father. And I believe you're going to be feeling his pull in this house today. You're going to be hearing his voice and receiving from him. He will draw you to his house, to his business, to his kingdom. God will speak and lead you. Don't tell me that God won't speak to a young person. Don't tell me, and I know I'm speaking to the choir in this group, but don't tell me that God won't work deeply in someone your age, no matter your background, no matter your home setting or your circumstance or situation. Amen. He's your heavenly father, and his heartbeat is beating within your heart, and he will lead you and guide you and speak to you. Samuel was born of a promise made to God to his mother, Hannah, a praying lady who desperately desired to have a child. She prayed deep prayers of intercession, and God answered. And she then dedicated Samuel to the Lord and to the house of the Lord. And to borrow a word that I've heard a few times around my house the last few weeks, she literally dedicated him to the house of the Lord. That may not be funny to you, but I love how teenagers cycle through words and literally has literally been the literal word of the month. She dedicated him to God's house. Most scholars believe in the story where he was called by God that he too was 12 and again, the younger age, but let it represent all of us, the maturity where God draws us and speaks to us. The Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called? He said, I, I didn't call. Lie down, lad. And he went and laid down and the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called. And he said, I, I did not call. Samuel thought it was Eli, his earthly guardian or leader speaking. He didn't realize that it was his heavenly father the next verse says Samuel did not yet know the Lord neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him some of you in this room are well along on this journey of hearing from God being led by God and God working in your in your life but to the group it may be a small group but I want to take a moment to say you you may be in the beginning phases you may not yet be experienced in hearing God's voice and you may not know for sure how it all works and can I be sure it's God that's going to lead me and speak to me and guide me. I just want to say don't worry. He'll keep calling you and you will hear his voice. He will reveal himself to you. I speak encouragement to you today. The Lord called Samuel the third time and it was repeated and the Bible said that Eli perceived God's calling this young man. And Eva, Eli, when he perceived this, said, when he calls again, say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And I want today, privileged to be the man standing in this pulpit to say, as happened to Eli, I felt it on me for weeks. But I perceive that God is talking to somebody today. I perceive, I felt it last night. Brother Carson and Brother Fober confirmed it. Just the anointing that you felt, just an orientation in this room was so strong. Some of you are not here just to find out where you place at nationals. Some of you are here because God's got a word for you. God's got a work for your heart. God's got something for your spirit today. Could we give a hand clap to the Lord right now? And I simply say, as Eli said, all you have to do is say, speak, Lord. I'm ready. I'm open. I am listening. So the Lord called again, and Samuel said, speak for your servant heareth. And God spoke blessing and judgment to a 12-year-old. Things began to shift in that nation as God began to speak to this young man. And he became a major, major leader, one of the greatest in all of Israel's history. Parents, I want to say that Hannah 
dedicated him to the Lord. Hannah prayed that baby into existence and prayed over him many times and she brought him to God's house. Parents, I know I'm preaching mostly to quizzers, but I'm preaching ministering to all of us today. I want to take a moment and tell you we can pray. We can dedicate our children. We can do everything we can to align them to be able to hear God's voice. But there comes a time that God's going to talk to them for themselves. There comes a time that we can't hear God only for them. Yes, we're still their parents. And God's still going to speak through us and minister through us. But we also need to realize God is going to begin talking to them on their own. God is going to begin. We can give them great opportunities and we can give them great environments but there comes a time that Eli has to say that's not me talking. You go back in that room and say Jesus here I am. I'm hungry for you. Thirsty for your word. And on behalf of every young person in this room parents I honor you. I thank you for making the commitment. I'm going to do an unabashed and unashamed plug for Bible quizzing ministry. I thank you for making the commitment and often sacrifice and often great sacrifice so that your children can learn, study, understand, and master hundreds of verses each year. I want to thank you for aligning them where God's word can become dear to their heart, for paying the price, for making those road trips on weekend tournaments, for doing what it takes. Young people in our lives, we are to thank God for every mentor, every teacher, every parent, every guardian, every leader, every minister who helps us to live for God. But today, it's not them talking. I know I'm the one holding the mic, but in a moment, you're going to realize you may already be feeling it. That man may be up there talking, but Jesus is talking in my heart. Hey, Amen. It's not my mentor today. Thank God for him. It's not my grandmother today. Thank God for her. I thank God for my pastor and my preacher. I thank God for the evangelist. But God, I'm hearing something that's not coming from the man in the pulpit. I'm hearing something that comes from God. You can hear his voice as he calls you to his house, to his presence. I thank God for your preacher's Bible. Some of my favorite preachers are in this room and I give you honor. I thank God for my pastor's Bible. I love it. When you find a Bible and you look and there's hardly a page that doesn't have notes or doesn't have something marked and something written. I, I love that. That's my, that's my, my preacher's Bible. That's, that's my, my pastor's Bible. If you would see mine on my iPad, I, I, I have moved from pages to the iPad because something happened about 45 and that backlit iPad Bible helps me a lot. I don't have a system. But there's colors almost on every page. I just highlight whatever color I feel like that day. But that's it, no big plan, but it sure does. It, it, I, I've been there. I thank God for my preacher's Bible. I have my grandma's Bible. It's full of her handwritten notes, and it's a great keepsake, and it's very sentimental. However, having Mama Albritton's Bible alone is not going to get me to heaven or help me be what I'm supposed to be. God, I'm supposed to pick up my own copy and I'm supposed to find my grandma's Bible and my pastor's Bible, amen, and my mentor's Bible. And I'm going to say, can I, can I use that for a while? That's yours. God gave that to you. But I, I got I to gotta begin writing. Would somebody bring me a pen? I, 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 I fooled fool around and left without a pen. I've got to get my own Bible. Thank you, Brother Carson. I've got to get my own Bible. I've got, I've got to begin making notes. I mean, do you realize that was a small one-verse request? But it said when you become king, you make yourself a copy of that word. You met, that was going to be time. That was going to take up a lot of time. That, that was going to be a lot of effort involved. But the Lord was saying, if you'll get it for yourself, if you'll take that anointing and that understanding and that revelation that I've given to those priests, and if you'll, you'll hold that Bible dearly, it's anointed. It's a powerful book but that's not the one that's going to carry you to eternity that's their Bible that's not the one that's going to get you into the gates of heaven that's not the one that's going to lead you to your ministry and your calling and your anointing you've got to take their Bible and you've got to start writing you've got to get it for yourself
the psalmist in chapter 119. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go in all the details, but Psalms 119 has long been known as the longest book in the Bible, and it takes two weeks to finish it on that Bible chart thing. Every time I get to Psalms 119, I'm like, didn't y'all mean 117? That's, that's my favorite when it's Bible reading night. But 119, 176 verses, 22 sections of eight verses each. And out of those 176 verses, only two of them do not directly name something about the word of God. It defines the word of God as the law, the testimonies, the precepts, the statutes, the commandments, the judgments, the word, the ordinances. And those words are in 174 of those 176 verses because the psalmist fell in love with the word of God. He talked about it. He wrote about it. He knew it was stability. He knew it was all sufficient. He knew he could trust it to get him through his life. And he summed up in one verse what I'm preaching today. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's not just pastor's Bible. It's not just the elder's Bible. It's mine. I'm hiding mine in my heart. I'm hiding it in my life so that I can follow God. Hold it so close that it imprints and gets in your heart. It's not just hearing it, but believing it, loving it, obeying it. Get it in your heart. It got in Jeremiah's heart, and it ate him up. We sometimes sing and preach and talk about, it's like fire. I can't sing. That was bad. Shut up in my bones like, like, like he was preaching about the joy of the Holy Ghost. Go read the context. All God was giving him was tough words. Wasn't easy. He had to speak of judgment and different things, and he got discouraged and said, I think I'll quit. But God's word was so strong inside of his heart. It became like a fire. He said, I tried to hold it in. I tried to keep it down. I tried to go another path, but it was doing something inside of me. It's, it just started moving. It was alive. It was burnt. I don't think he was smiling, saying, it's like fire. I think he was saying, what's this going on? I'm miserable. I tried to backslide, and I can't. I tried to quit, and I can't, because it's like a fire that is shut up inside of my bones. God forbid, but I felt a word in the room last night. And I felt it again this morning. God forbid that anybody in this room would ever get so discouraged that you would quit or backslide or think of walking away from God. But I want to speak a word humbly but boldly. If you ever do, it's not, you're not going to ever fit anywhere in this world. you got the word of God handprinted on your heart. You won't fit, you won't belong, and you won't be able to make it long. I speak and I prophesy that it'll be like a fire shut up in your bones. That you'll twist and roll over in your bed at night. You won't be able to drown it out. You won't be able to party it out. You won't be able to outrun it because you got God's word in your heart. <laughs> I close. But I remember during college years God's word and principles and my beliefs were being affronted on every side. Anybody ever felt that? Some professors were sly and some were blatant, but almost all of them were communicating their agenda and I was shaken. I also met people who believed in God and the Bible but believed it so much differently about doctrine and God's plan of salvation. And I, I wonder sometimes, is it the same Bible? But they believed it so strong and their thoughts on Christian living didn't seem to exist. And I remember it, it shook me. 
I was very confused and bothered. And I remember buying doctrinal and biblical teaching books on what I believed and what I had believed and been taught. And I got some books for some other beliefs. In our den of my home in Baton Rouge where I lived at the time, I decided I I was going to break these books down and I was going to have to come to some conclusions. And I literally had a stack of books on this side and a stack of books on this side. And I got about 10 minutes, 15 minutes into flipping back and forth. And I said, wait a minute. I can read every one of these books. And when I get done, all I'm going to have is what some men who may be great men, what they thought about what this book said. I said, books, I spent some money on you, but I pushed them to the side. And I got my Bible. And I got a blank notebook. And I sat in a recliner chair in our den. And I saw the sun come up. Amen. And the next night, I didn't sleep a wink. And it was me and my Bible and Jesus. But you know what I was doing? I was getting it for myself. You know what I was doing? I was saying, ah, I do see. Oh, that Holy Ghost is in there. Oh, yes, it is. You got to have it. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, look, they spoke with other tongues. Uh, Oh, yes. Jesus is the given name of the one true God. Uh, Yo, I got to be baptized in his name. Uh, uh, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Come out from among. uh, It's all in there. I got it for myself. sun came up on that second morning you you can stay standing thank you brother Fobert was no longer just Joe Albritton's Bible it was no longer just a pastor's Bible it was no longer just Mama Albritton and Mama Blunt, Papa Albritton, Papa, it, it was no longer just their belief system. I walked out the second morning. No professor could shake what I had now. No wave of worldly system thought process could change what I had now. Because God gave it to me for myself. What did our text say that's... Deuteronomy 17, your, your, your verse, can you quote it with me? And it shall be with him, and he shall, y'all supposed to know this, and he shall read it, how long? All the days of his life, that he can follow the statutes, the commandments, you close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord with me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's honor the Lord for a moment. We have some focus prayers. We're going to pray, but let's honor the Lord for a moment. The spirit of anointing is in this room. The spirit of anointing is in this room. If I can have your attention just a moment, the flow is so strong. Parents, we're going to pray the first prayer. Quizzers, you keep praying under your breath. But parents, we're going to pray the first prayer. You're Hannah in this story. You're Hannah in this story. You've brought them to the house of God. You've dedicated them to the Lord. You've paid the price financially and in your family for commitment and discipline. You're doing all you can to get them aligned where they can hear from God. I want you to pray a blessing at Thanksgiving over God to the Lord. And in a moment, we're going to pray a release over our children. Would you lift your hands to the Lord? Lord, amen. It's not just the kids that's in this ministry. 
every coach, every mentor, every leader, every parent. You're doing everything you can. You're a Hannah. You're bringing them to the house of God. You're putting God's word in them. Hallelujah. You're putting God's word in them. Hallelujah. You're doing all that you can. You're doing all that you can. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for dedicating them to the house of God. Now, parents, coaches, mentors, would you do something with right now? I want you to pray a release over your young people, over the ones on your team, over your children. God, they're going to have to keep listening to mom and dad, but I free them to hear God's voice. I speak a blessing. I speak an anointing. If they're close to you, put your hand on their shoulder. If they're close to you, turn and anoint. We don't have a room at the front for everybody to come. Just turn. That's it. And begin praying right now. Every parent, every adult, every coach, every mentor, Amen. Release a blessing on your young people right now. Release a blessing on your children right now. Release, Young people, we're releasing you. You're going to hear from God. You're going to receive from God. You're going to get a word from God. You're going to get something from the throne room. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Young person, every quizzer, hands lifted to the heavens. Every quizzer, hands lifted to the heavens. I hope somebody can get to all of you. If we tried to come up front right now, it'd be too crowded. Everybody, everybody, make sure you're getting to a quizzer right now. We release them to hear from God. We release them to get a blessing from the Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Let that flow right now, folks. There's an anointing in this room that's so pure. There's an anointing that's so strong. Ever quizzer, your eyes closed, your hands lifted to the heaven. Tell him, speak, Lord. I'm listening. Speak, Lord. I'm listening. I receive your call. I receive your word. I receive your word. I receive your ministry on me today. I receive your work in my heart today. That's it. Come on, every quizzer, front row to the back. The back is praying just as strong as the front. I receive your word on me today, Jesus. I listen. I'm open. I'm available. My heart's open. My mind's open. Uh-huh. Pastors in the room walk and pray. Ministers in the room walk and pray. Hallelujah. I felt this entire sanctuary is dedicated as an altar to the Lord right now. This entire sanctuary is dedicated as an altar to the Lord right now. A house of prayer. A house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer Lord, make me a house Make me a house of prayer A house of prayer May the fire May the fire of my altar never burn out The fire of my altar never burn out May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me 
a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. There's such a pure flow of the anointing in this room. I'm going to ask you to make a conscious effort. If you feel a friend from another district, another state, another family on your heart, take the time to move right now. Ministers, take a few steps. Amen. I'm just There's ministry anointing in this house for the next few minutes. Amen. Some are already doing it. Amen. But just take a moment. Turn and walk. Find a friend. Find someone they may be from your district. Find a family they may be someone you've met from another state. Find somebody. Put your hand on their shoulders. Find somebody to pray with in the Holy Ghost right now. Find someone to cry over, pray over, or minister in the Spirit of God. There's a spirit of purity in this room. There's a spirit of ministry in this house. There's a spirit of anointing from the parents to the coaches, to the students, to the children. Hallelujah, quizzers. That's it. We got a few more minutes. Don't stop. Keep those hands lifted. Keep those eyes closed, crying out to God. Let a travail come on you. Let an intercession come on you. Let a prayer of the Holy Ghost come on you right now. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. The fire of my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. Be a house of prayer, a house of Day and night and night and day, 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 day and night
me a house of prayer day and night and night and day day and night and night and day day and night and night and day make me a house of prayer
Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of bread. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of bread. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of bread. A house of bread. May the fire of my altar never burn out. The fire at my altar never burn out. May the fire at my altar never burn out. Make me a house of bread. May the fire at my altar never burn out. May the fire at my altar never burn out. May the fire at my altar never burn out. Make me a house of bread. Make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer.
Lead me, Lord. I will follow. Lead me, Lord. I want everybody in the room to pray. I don't want us to sing for a minute. I want everybody in the room to pray. Throw your hands towards heaven and pray. Let's push in prayer for a minute. This is a commitment we can't sing our way to or let somebody else sing for us for a minute. Come on, I want you to lift your voice. I want you to thunder for a few moments. Come on, I want you to pray until something breaks in the section you're seated in. Come on, from the front to the back, I want everybody to pray until something breaks in the area where you're at. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we ever fail to learn how to hear the voice of God for ourselves, we are finished as an apostolic movement. 
That sounds dramatic. It sounds like hyperbole. It is not. Young people, hear me. We ever fail to learn how to hear the voice of God for ourselves, we are through. That command to those kings that would come, that would follow, they didn't fulfill it. The nation of Israel was carried away captive after the mercies of God had been extended for generations. They were through. God, help us learn from that mistake. May it never be so. May it never be so amongst our generations, one after the other, learning from the one before to get it for themselves, to know what the voice of the Lord sounds like when it speaks into their spirits for themselves. Hallelujah. Never in contradiction to the word that's been revealed, but always true and dynamic. Hallelujah. Personal and purposeful for yourself. For yourself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Albritton. Thank you, Brother Albritton, for unburdening yourself for that which you have carried for these many months. And I pledge, and on behalf of this quiz family, we are going to continue to hold you and your family up in prayer. I don't know what the Lord has in store, but I know that what you've experienced lost, you've experienced gain as well. And we love and appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we thank the Lord one last time before we're dismissed? God, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, that you would speak to us. God, that you would train our ears to hear your voice, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, what a privilege. I pray that we never take for granted, God, your voice when you speak. God, that we never shut you out, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, but that we would be quick to hear, quick to obey, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, to see the wondrous results of what you have in store fulfilled, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Oh, glory. I just, I feel that there may be some who may need to continue to pray. And if that is the case, do not feel ashamed to find a corner of this convention center to gather together and to continue to pray. If God is speaking into your spirit just because we're dismissed in this moment, God, it doesn't mean that God is finished with you. And if you feel led to do so, you, you find brothers and sisters and you continue to pray. Or you go back to your hotel room and you intercede until God releases you. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to dismiss the body of the quiz family at this time. Back to your split sessions, please be aware of experience to the experience sessions, intermediates to the intermediate sessions. We are going to continue quizzing in our split sessions for this afternoon. We have been efficient in our quizzing this morning, and that allows us to take the time at these times. Amen. Are you thankful for that? Hallelujah. And so we are going to look forward to a wonderful afternoon of quizzing. God bless you. If we can move as smoothly as possible, get those back doors open so we can resume quizzing within here, within the next.